I was lucky enough to have them in my life for 40 years, but people aren't always that lucky. And So growing, growing up, your dad, yeah. obviously at a very young age, he was thrust into the limelight, wasn't he, of, yeah. of table tennis world. When, when table tennis, he, I mean, he made table tennis cool. Now the men, Britain's Chester Barnes at the far end in his explosive match with the Czech Vladimir Miko. Barnes lost that point, but in the vital third game, the brilliant Czech player was outplayed. Here comes match point, Miko serving. And a win for Barnes. Table tennis wasn't in the sort of national spotlight, a bit like now. I mean, I couldn't name many international players, or I mean, I don't, you don't see it on terrestrial TV. I mean, you see it occasionally on sort of Eurosport and Sky, but yeah, I think he sort of was the first, from what I gather, I mean, I don't know, and I might be speaking yeah. slightly out of turn, but from what some of the old players have told me and people that have, have wrote to me, he sort of put it into the sort of, into the limelight really, and helped, yeah. to help make table tennis sort of a, a well-known sport. Because I, mean, I mean, I've read some messages from people that, you know, growing up playing table tennis, they, you know, they would, as kids, they would pretend that they were that your dad, yeah. you know, where we would hold a putt, pretending we're like yeah. Nick Faldo or Tiger Woods, maybe later on, or Sergio Garcia or whatever. It's amazing to think that, isn't it? That yeah. someone can have such an impact that we, that you, obviously your dad and I knew really close. I mean, he, he packed a lot into his 74 years on the planet, didn't he? Yeah. So, I mean, he'd done, done so much. And so he won the British Championship. Yeah, he's he... still the, as far as I'm aware, he's still the youngest ever British. Winner of the British, um, yeah, well, British Championship, which was uh, when he was 15 years old, and he'd only been playing table tennis for three years before he'd won it. Um, went on to win it five times, um, and then obviously he's gone on to to then do horse racing and sort of get to the top of that sort of game went with Martin in sort of the 90s when they were sort of um, Martin was champion, yeah. uh, jumps trainer for sort of. 10 or 11, maybe 30, 12, 13 years in yeah. a row. So yeah, he's done really well. Got to the top in both sports. And you don't, you don't realise how many lives he's touched over the years because yeah. until you read the comments that obviously you've had lots and lots of letters and lots of emails and things yeah. like that have come in. But even some of the stuff that I've read that people have messaged me, you know, yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, in his in his life. Oh, he had, a, he, had, life, he, had a, he had a know, great life. Starting out with table tennis, getting into yeah. the racing, following on from that. I mean, it's yeah. been phenomenal, hasn't it? Yeah, this is actually my third attempt to trying to do a, a message about Chester um, without just laughing hysterically. I first met Chester Barnes back in 1980 when I was a blue coat, and I should have been 18 and I'd only turned 16. And he was one of the very few that knew. And he would constantly wind me up. And when we were doing the table tennis ex exhibitions, he would make jokes about, doesn't Shane look young <laughs> for his age? And for years, um, I, I managed to get to know him socially, on and off the table tennis table. And it was such a big encouragement. Uh, in my career and uh, wow Chester anyway here's a message just want to say he was a big influence on my career for the years even when I left Pontins and then I remember getting a message when I went into EastEnders and somehow he'd always get a message to me through a friend of a friend of a friend and when I think about him now I, I just have big smiles and I used to joke about how uh, you might be funnier than me Chester but I am taller than you and that was a running gag and even when I had the frying pan in my hand and he'd make me look like such a lemon. But he was a big influence in my life and he, and he taught me how to work the general public and how to be gracious and um, treat everyone the way you want to be treated. That's what um, Chester used to say. And as for Trevor, <laughs> got them two. God, they were a double act and a half. Anyway, Chester, I, I, somehow I got a feeling you're seeing and hearing this and mate, um, you were a big influence on me, a massive influence. And even now, we've got a table tennis table and I always take the kids, kids, I'm gonna do this trick that my mate Chester Barnes used to do and I get a fry band to make a complete twat of myself. But he was um, a small bloke with a big heart. And wherever you are now, Chester, I'm still taller than you. And love to Jane and all your family and friends. And um, 
yeah, I'll be thinking of you, mate. Always. You know, I've th thought about my time with your dad yeah. growing up, and you don't realise how much they have an impact on your life until they're no. not there. Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I, it flooded back with so many memories of us growing up as kids. Um, I mean, your dad bailed us out of a bit of trouble. <laughs> Quite often. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> your dad was there and get us through it and um, taking yeah. us to tournaments oh, and yeah. passing on, like, quietly, whether he, whether he was doing it on purpose or whether, whether he just, it was a natural thing for him, which I believe it probably was, to pass on some of his experiences. I mean, yeah. I remember being in the car with you, you and your dad driving to um, junior events and him talking to us, and it was just subtle things about... I don't know, things that you just, you, you don't realise what he's saying at the time, but then yeah. it, it, it's stuff that he's learnt over the years in his game Yeah. that he's passed, subtly passing on to us we, in we, our game. We were saying earlier, like, it's almost, I mean, he would have loved reading all those cards and, you know, what impact he had on, on people, and it's almost a shame that people don't have almost like a memorial or... Yeah. Like a lot, I know it sounds stupid, but almost like... A celebration of your life before you actually die, so then yeah. you actually know what people, what you, how you affected people and what you mean yeah. to people. But I know he'd be looking down now, and he'd be sort of, you know, proud of what he's left behind with with everything. And you know, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I honestly couldn't ask for <clears throat> better parents. Really, my my mum's brilliant, and yeah. she's she's had a difficult week, but um, she's trying to remain positive and. You know, I just want to, like, obviously if he's listening, just thank him for what he's done for me, really, like. 